Hello, I'm Phoenix City Council Member Carlos Garcia with District 8. We will never replace in-person teaching, but during these trying times, our children still need to continue to learn. The City of Phoenix is proud to partner with both the Osborne and Roosevelt School Districts to bring you Phoenix TV Classroom Study Hall. Youth and education is a priority for Phoenix. That's why the city is bringing you the study hall to your home during this next hour right here on Phoenix TV. Learning should never stop, so get ready for class. Here's the study hall. Hi friends, I'm Ms. Greenberg and I teach art at Encanto Elementary School with the Osborne School District. And in a previous lesson, I recently talked about the artist Keith Haring. Keith Haring was known for his street art. He started off as a street artist and then was hired to do murals um, on buildings or do billboards for companies. So one thing I love about Phoenix is that we have so much street art and these artists are doing it with permission many of these places commission artists to make art now this particular one is located at the old dutch brothers location at the corner of central and camelback and this artist is timothy chapman so i'm going to turn the camera around so you can get a closer view of his work Timothy Chapman actually studied biology, and he was inspired by some of the historical books that documented animals and plant species. But what Timothy did was added a little humor to his artwork, and his style is in the surreal style, which is kind of like a dream. This doesn't really exist. So if you take a look at it, what do you see? How does it make you feel? Do you like it? He's one of my favorite local artists in town. He also is um, an artist who is represented at a local gallery in Scottsdale. This is probably one of the only murals Timothy has ever done. He usually paints on wood or canvas. So this is not the only artwork I'm going to be sharing with you. I'm gonna take you to a few other places around town and show you what other street art you might come across. All right, so now I'm down on Grand Avenue. There are so many little areas that you can just walk around and just look at all the street art nearby. And um, one thing I forgot to mention when I was over at Timothy Chapman's mural was that many of these artists do um, paint things that are important to their city, um, not just fun, you know, whatever comes to mind, but they do represent the town that they are in. For instance, uh, Timothy Chapman's had a jackalope. Do you know what a jackalope is? It was a mythical creature. So they're playing off of ideas that come from their city. Now this mural behind me, you can see that there are cacti, which is representative of Phoenix, but it's got a little bit more, it's a little bit fun. And you might be able to uh, relate to what this mural represents. So here's the mural down on Grand Avenue in McKinley. What do you think it's about? This mural is actually painted by the artist Rebecca Green back in 2015. I'm gonna zoom in a little closer. I think this is just such a cute mural, especially for those that are studying art. It reminds me of my classes. <laughs> Does it remind you of anything? Now, sometimes street art doesn't always have to be murals. 
There are many artists who work in different types of medium. So this section that I'm going to show you, I mean, just look behind me. Can you see all this? This isn't paintings. These are little sculptures that have been hung or yarn wrapped around the trees. So I, I know, I'm sorry about the noise. So I am going to zoom in and show you a little bit of more of this interesting area right on Grand Avenue. Now this work of art is done by the artist Tato. He's been around for many years and he's got work all over the city. I'm going to turn this around, have you take a look, and then I'll tell you some information about it. Now look at this art and think about what you see. This art is actually on the side of the old Bragg's pie shop. So it's part of that building. Does it make you think of anything? Maybe? Tato tends to elongate his figures, so they don't look realistic. They have a longer appeal. You notice his arms, the neck, the face. He's drawn them out to look a little longer than they are in reality. So now the area that I'm in is called Roosevelt Row. It's right off of Roosevelt. Roosevelt is known as the Arts District. And if you come down to this area near Roosevelt, uh, anywhere around Central, you can go down to like Fifth Street to Fifth Ave, you will find murals and street art all over the place. This is one of the hotbeds for street art and the, I mean, that's why it's called the Arts District. So the one behind me is a really fun one. A lot of people take selfies because it spreads out behind them. But I just wanna show you all the different art that you can see. So I'm gonna turn this around. And also when I turn it around, look closely. See if it might remind you of anything. You have to look close though. All right. So here's the mural that I was standing in front of. You might see some power lines going in all different directions. But does it remind you of anything at all? Maybe? Let me give you a clue. What state do we live in? <laughs> it represents the Arizona flag. Down in the bottom in the center, you will see the star. And then the, the uh, power lines, the poles, represent the rays of the sun, like it does in the Arizona flag. Another great thing about walking around Roosevelt Road to see the street art is all you have to do is just Get on your feet, walk around, and definitely go through some of the alleyways. You'll find a lot of interesting street art. This alleyway is right next door to the other mural I just showed about the Arizona flag behind the building of the Churchill. And this is by Tato. Remember, we already saw a piece by Tato um, over on Grand Avenue. And so this is another piece. So I'm going to turn the camera around and walk you through the alleyway so you can check out some of the art. Now standing right on Roosevelt Row, you will also see some amazing pieces. In fact, the one I'm about to show you is one that you might have seen before. I'm gonna turn. Have you seen this? Let me flip it around so you can get a better look. This mural is on the side of Carly's Restaurant located on Roosevelt. Can you tell what it is? Yeah, it's the Phoenix Suns and some of the most popular players that have been on the team. Can you identify them? 
And just across the street from the Phoenix Suns mural, there is a courtyard. And there's a particular piece I wanna show you. In one of my videos, I talked about how art makes us feel. So I want you to consider that when looking at this artwork. How does it make you feel when you see it? I have a couple pieces I'm gonna show you next that touches our emotions. All right, so this particular piece is done by the artist Brian Boner. Show you the whole thing. All those birds. And if I turn around, there's a whole nother mural over here. But let's go back. I want you to take a look at this. What do you notice happening? Who do you see? What do you think he's doing? And then right below the boy's feet, there is a message. At the end of life, we will not be judged by how many diplomas we have received, how much money we have made, how many great things we have done. We will be judged by, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was naked and you clothed me. I was homeless and you took me in. Mother Teresa. So this is the second piece that I wanted to share with you. This artwork is done by Hugo Medina. And I want you to think about how it makes you feel. And then I'll tell you the story behind this work of art. So this piece is also on Roosevelt. Take a look at it. What kind of emotions do you feel when you see this? Maybe sadness? Despair? So the history behind this piece is that Roosevelt Row used to be an area where all the artists would live and have their galleries out of their own spaces. But as times changed and more people moved to downtown Phoenix, new buildings have been built like the ones behind me. So it's about the changing times with all the new high rises and how the artists had to find new places to live and work. Did you see all that art in one place? This area is an alleyway that's covered with murals in the neighborhood of Coronado. Every March they have what is called the Oak Street Mural Festival and the community comes together. There's people selling food, they're gathering, and they're watching the artists make the murals. Artists come from all over the country to put a mural in this location. It's right off 15th Street and Oak Street in the Coronado neighborhood. So if you ever get a chance, come out this way and take a look. I wanted to thank you for coming on this little tour of murals around Phoenix with me. Hopefully one morning when it's cooler out, you'll get out, travel, walk around, and come see what the artists are doing in your community. There's so much out there. Wishing you well, have a good day. Hello, can you say hello? Great, my name is Mr. Wagner. What's your name? Awesome, 
I'm the music teacher at John F. Kennedy Elementary School in the Roosevelt School District in Phoenix, Arizona. And today, we're gonna learn to read, hear, and sing music. Are you ready? All right, let's go. Hmm, what do you see? I can see clocks. Clocks can keep a steady beat. Can you say tick tock, tick tock? Good job. Tick tock, tick tock. You got it. Steady beat, steady beat. Excellent work. You can hear and keep a steady beat. Okay. Can you see steady beats? Hmm. I can see tick tock, 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 ready, freeze. Great job. You can see steady beats. Okay. Can you count the beats? Ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, Ready, freeze, freeze, you got it. Excellent work. You can count steady beats and you got one star. High five, woo! Excellent work. You are doing great. Okay, I can see four beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, freeze. Excellent work. Okay, hmm. I can see four beats, four beats. Repeat sign, two times. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, repeat. One, two, three, four. One, two, ready, freeze. Excellent work. You are reading music well and you got one, two, two stars, high five. Woo! Awesome. Okay, hmm. I can see four beats, four beats, four beats, four beats, repeat sign two times. Woo! Here we go. Set, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, repeat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, ready, freeze. You got it, excellent work. Okay, here's our song, sounds like this. Doggy, doggy, where's your bone? Someone took it from your home. Who took your bone? I took your bone. No repeat. Okay, again, here we go. Doggy, doggy, where's your bone? Someone took it from your home. Who took your bone? I took your bone. All right, can you keep a steady beat and sing with me? Here we go. Doggy, doggy, where's your bone? Someone took it from your home. Who took your bone? I took your bone. You got it, you could keep a steady beat and sing. Awesome, okay, I can see red, blue, Red, blue, okay. Teacher, red, you, blue. Teacher, red, you, blue. Take turns. Are you ready? Okay, I go first. Here I go. Doggy, doggy, where's your bone? Who took your bone? Did you get it? Okay, one more time. I go first. Ready? Here I go. Doggy, doggy, where's your bone? Who took your bone? <gasps> Excellent work. You are singing well and you can see steady beats. You got one, two, three stars. High five. Woo! Hmm. I can see high, low, high, low. High, low, high, low. Cool. 
high, 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 low. High, high, low, low. Excellent work. Okay, you can sing high and low. High has a name, its name is so. Low has a name, its name is me. Can you show me so, me, so, me? You got it, excellent work. Okay, hmm, what do you see? So, me, so, me. So, me, so, me. Excellent work, okay, cool. What do you see? So, 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 me. So, 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 me. Very cool, you are singing well. Okay. So, so, me, me. Good. So, so, me, me. Excellent work. Okay, hmm, quiz time. Show me your fingers. One, two, or three. What do you hear? Teacher sings, so me, so me. Show me your fingers. One, two, or three. What did you hear? Hmm. Did you hear? So me, so me. Number one, you got it. Okay, another one. Teacher says, so, 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 me. Good. So, 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 me. Show me your fingers. One, two, or three. What did you hear? Hmm. Did you hear? So, so, so. No. Did you hear? So, 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 me. That's right. Number three. Excellent work. You got one star. High five. Woo! Awesome. All right, you are reading music well. One, two, ready, go. So me, so me, so me, so repeat. So me, so me, so me, so rest. Freeze. Cool, I can see four beats. Four beats. Can you say rest? Okay, what do you see? Hmm, I can see so, so, me, me, so, so, me, rest. So, so, me, me, so, so, me, rest. Excellent work. Okay, hmm, what do you see? So, 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 me, so, me, so, rest. So, 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 me, so, me, so, rest. That's it. You are reading Music Well. You got one, two, two stars. High five. Woo! Excellent work. Okay. Hmm. Do you remember? Doggy, doggy, where's your bone? Someone took it from your home. Who took your bone? I took your bone. No, repeat. One more time. Doggy, doggy, where's your bone? Someone took it from your home. Who took your bone? I took your bone. That's it, you got it. Okay, can you count the beats? Count with me. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So me, so me, so me, so me. So me, so me, so me, so me. Doggy, doggy, where's your bone? Someone took it from your home. Who took your bone? I took your bone. Excellent job. You are singing great. You got one, two, three. Three stars. High five. Woo! Excellent work. You are reading music well. You have strong ears. I will see you next time. Thank you. Can you say goodbye? Good job. Bye-bye. Hello. Can you say hello? Great. Welcome back. It's good to see you. Are you ready? Let's go. Can you say rhythm? 
That's right. Rhythm is long or short. Okay. Hmm. Can you say tick tock, tick tock? That's right. Steady beat, steady beat. Okay, can you say long, 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 long? That's right. Short, 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 short. Okay. Short, short, long, short, short, long. That's right. Long, long, short, short, long. That's right. Rest, 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 rest. Very cool. Long. Short, short. Rest. Excellent work. Okay. Hmm. I can see four beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, ready, freeze. Awesome. Okay, can you say long, 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 long? Good. Short, 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 short. Rest, 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 rest. Excellent work. You are reading music well. Very cool. Okay. Hmm. What do you see? I can see long, long, short, short, long. That's right. Long, long, short, short, long. Very cool. Okay. Hmm. I can see short, short, long, short, short, long. That's right. Short, short, long, short, short, long. Very good. You are reading music well. One more. Short, 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 long. That's right. Short, 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 long. Excellent work. You are reading music well and you got one star. High five. Woo! Excellent work. Okay. Hmm. Quiz time. What do you hear? Show me your fingers. Teacher sings. Short, short, long, short, short, long. I said short, short, long, short, short, long. Okay, show me your fingers. One, two, or three. What did you hear? Hmm. Did you hear short, short, long? No. Okay. Did you hear? Short, short, long, short, short, long. That's right, number two. Okay, one more. Hmm, teacher says, long, long, short, short, long. I said, long, long, short, short, long. Okay, show me your fingers. One, two, or three. What did you hear? Hmm, did you hear? Long, long, short, short, long. Number one. Very cool. You have strong ears. You got one, two, two stars. High five. Woo! Excellent work. Okay. Hmm. What do you see? Four beats, four beats. Repeat sign. Are you ready? Here we go. Short, 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 short long. Short, 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 long. Short, 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 long. Short, 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 freeze. You got it. Excellent work. Okay. Hmm. I can see. Long, short, short, long, 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 short, short, long, 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 short, short, long, 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 short, short, long, long. Nice job. Okay. Remember our song? Sounds like this. Doggy, doggy, where's your bone? Someone took it from your home. Who took your bone? I took your bone. No repeat. Try again. Two, ready, go. Doggy, doggy, where's your bone? Someone took it from your home. Who took your bone? I took your bone. Okay, what rhythm do you see? Long. What rhythm do you see? 
short short all the way short 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 one two ready go short 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 long short 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 long long short short long 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 short short long long did you get it one more time one two last time go short 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 long short 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 long long short short long 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 short short long long excellent work you are reading music while you got one two three three stars high five can you say rhythm that's right rhythm is long or short okay hmm can you say tick tock tick tock that's right steady beat steady beat okay can you say long 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 that's right short 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 okay short short long short short long that's right long long short short long that's right rest 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 very cool long short short rest excellent work okay hmm I can see four beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, ready, freeze. Awesome. Okay, can you say long, 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 long? Good. Short, 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 short. Rest, 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 rest. Excellent work. You are reading music well. Very cool. Okay. Hmm. What do you see? I can see long, long, short, short, long. That's right. Long, long, short, short, long. Very cool. Okay. Hmm. I can see short, short, long, short, short, long. That's right. Short, short, long, short, short, long. Very good. You are reading music well. One more. Short, 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 long. That's right. Short, 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 long. Excellent work. You are reading music well, and you got one star. High five. Woo! Excellent work. Okay. Hmm. Quiz time. What do you hear? Show me your fingers. Teacher sings. Short, short, long, short, short, long. I said short, short, long, short, short, long. Okay, show me your fingers. One, two, or three. What did you hear? Hmm. Did you hear short, short, long? No. Okay. Did you hear? Short, short, long, short, short, long. That's right, number two. Okay, one more. Hmm, teacher says, long, long, short, short, long. I said, long, long, short, short, long. Okay, show me your fingers. One, two, or three. What did you hear? Hmm, did you hear? Long, long, short, short, long. Number one. Very cool. You have strong ears. You got one, two, two stars. High five. Woo! Okay. Hmm. I can see. Long, short, short, long, 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 short, short, long, 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 short, short, long, 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 short, short, long, long. Nice job. Okay. Remember our song? Sounds like this. Doggy, doggy, where's your bone? Someone took it from your home. Who took your bone? I took your bone. No repeat. Try again. Two, ready, go. 
Doggy, doggy, where's your bone? Someone took it from your home. Who took your bone? I took your bone. Okay, what rhythm do you see? Long. What rhythm do you see? Short, short. All the way. Short, 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 short. One, two, ready, go. Short, 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 long. Short, 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 long. Long, short, short, long, long. Long, short, short, long, long. Did you get it? One more time. One, two, last time, go. Short, 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 long. Short, 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 long. Long, short, short, long, long. Long, short, short, long, long. Excellent work. You are reading music while you got one, two, three, three stars, high five. Woo! Awesome. All right, you are reading rhythm well, long and short. I will see you next time. Thank you. Can you say goodbye? Good job. Good morning, students. I'm Michael Roberts, superintendent of the Osborne School District in Central Phoenix. And I'm Quentin Boy, superintendent of the Roosevelt School District in South Phoenix. We're pleased to have this partnership with the City of Phoenix to take Phoenix students on a new learning adventure right here on Phoenix TV. Just because our school buildings are closed doesn't mean the learning stops. We have the best, most creative teachers from Roosevelt and Osborne School Districts on board to provide you with a great learning experience. Okay, students, that's the bell. So the Phoenix TV Study Hall resumes. Here's your next lesson. Oh, hey there, boys and girls. Coach Pettit here from Campbell Elementary with this week's PE class. This week, we will be exploring two underwater ecosystems while snorkeling. Hopefully, we can get up close and personal with some of the sea life that inhabits a coral reef. But first, let's get warmed up. Before we head off in the boat, let's get warmed up. We're going to start with arm circles going forward. Now we're going to go backwards. And now we're going to do some arm swings. Now we're going to trunk twist. Side to side, pause, and stretch out those obliques. We're going to do some windmills. Touch your toes, come back up. If you can't touch your toes, touch your shin, touch your knee. Just try to go closer and closer to the ground each time. We're going to finish off with some jumping jacks. I love jumping jacks. I did some jumping jacks. Now that we're warmed up, let's head off in our boat. <gasps> yes! This week's 60 Seconds of Kindness is snorkeling etiquette. Snorkeling is one of the best ways to view fascinating, vibrant marine life. However, to enjoy snorkeling and to get the best out of the underwater world while respecting and preserving its beauty, you should practice snorkeling etiquette. Here are a few tips that will help you become an environment-friendly snorkeling pro. This looks like a good spot. I'm gonna drop the anchor, son. Okay. For this week's fitness, we will be exercising for 20 seconds and resting for 10 seconds. While we rest for 10 seconds, we're going to learn about the marine life that inhabits a coral reef. Got it! Check your space at home. Make sure you can safely follow along with me. Let's dive in.
this week's 60 seconds of safety is water safety. Swimming or hanging out in the pool can be a fun activity and even great exercise. However, we need to do so carefully. Never swim alone, always have an adult. Wear a life vest or floaties until you learn how to swim. Always enter the water feet first. Stay away from pool drains. Stay within the designated swim areas in rivers and lakes. Know what to do in an emergency. Don't jump in to save someone. Reach, throw, don't go. Use a floaty or a long object to pull a struggling swimmer to safety. If necessary, tell someone to call 911. Be smart, be safe, and have fun with water. All right, here looks like a good spot. For our second round of fitness, we're out here in the Atlantic Ocean exploring the Banana Reef in the Maldives. Let's get ready, get a quick drink of water, and let's get ready for round two.
This week's 60 seconds of nutrition is quality versus quantity. Which is more important, eating the right amount of food or eating the right type of food? The answer is both. When it comes to overall health, both quality and quantity are important. Be mindful of what you eat, how much, and how often. Moderation is the key. Eating more high-quality foods is best. Quality foods are foods that come from the source. When talking about quantity, we're talking about how much. If you're not getting enough food, that can prompt your body to store the food as fat instead of using it for energy. Low quality foods are foods farthest from its original source. When in doubt, read the nutrition label and the ingredient list. Remember to eat your fruits and vegetables. And that concludes this week's 60 Seconds of Nutrition. Eat quality foods in moderation. Hey boys and girls, now that we're back to the shore, let's cool down. Let's stretch our quads. Reach back and hold it. If you need to, hold your belly button for balance. Switch to the other side, keep your balance. If you start to lose it, just put it down and regain that stretch. Holding that quad or pulling on your quad. Now we're going to stretch our hamstrings. Reach down through your toes. We're going to switch to the other side. If you can't reach your toes, put your hand on your shin or your ankle. It's as far as you can go down. You feel the stretch in the back of your thigh, and that's where your hamstrings are. <clears throat> now we're going to have a seat, cross our legs, and sit into our heel, stretching out our seat, also known as our glutes. Switch to the other side. Thanks for joining me, Coach Pettit from Campbell Elementary, as we got to explore two popular coral reefs. Remember, be safe around water, eat quality foods in moderate quantities, and be kind to nature. Join me next week for another exploration. Welcome artists, my name is Ms. Chavez. I am an artist and art educator at Maxino Bush Elementary School. And for today's art lesson, we're gonna be creating mandalas. For this art lesson, you're gonna be working outside and using objects found in nature. So get yourself ready, let's go outside, get some fresh air and create something beautiful. We will be using the element of art shape. There are two types of shape, organic and geometric. The geometric shape we are using is a circle. The principle of art we are focusing on is balance. There are three different types of balance, symmetrical balance, asymmetrical balance, and radial balance. We will be using radial balance for our mandalas. Radial balance. I create radial balance when I repeat shapes and images evenly from the center outward. We will be using radial balance for our mandalas. You will start from the center of your circle and work your way outward. Mandala is a Sanskrit word meaning sacred container or circle. Tibetan monks created a medicine sand mandala to help heal the community and the environment. During the process, they are meditating. Every grain of sand is giving a blessing. They believe in impermanence, meaning lasting for only a limited period of time. 
They also believe you shouldn't be attached to anything. So at the end of creating this beautiful mandala, they destroy it and they put it to bed. It returns back to the earth. Mother Nature has created her own mandalas. You can find them in flowers, tree rings, eyes, spider webs, seashells, cacti, and so much more. Now that you have a bit of background information, it's time to get started. The supplies you need, a bag or basket or a container, permission to use the front yard or the backyard. Remember, this is a quiet, peaceful activity. Step one, go outside and look for examples of mandalas in nature for inspiration. Step two, gather found objects to make your mandala, fallen objects such as flower petals, grass, pine cones, rocks, leaves, sticks, and shells. Step three, find a clear area to work. Step four, draw a circle in the dirt and clean out the center so you can have a clean workspace. Step five, set your intentions for what you want to heal with your mandala. Focus your thoughts on that. Step six, find the center of your mandala and mark it with your first object. Step seven, choose your next object and build a circular layer around your center object and radiate your design from the inside out. Step eight, continue to add as many layers as you would like Step nine, admire your work. You're doing a great job. Your mandala is beautiful. Step 10, once you are completely finished and you have admired your mandala, Leave your mandala for nature or do like the Tibetan monks do and put it to bed back with mother nature. Here are some examples of mandalas other people have made from objects found in nature. Great job, artist. I hope everyone enjoyed today's art lesson. For more information on Tibetan monks and their sand mandalas, please feel free to go ahead and continue your research and use YouTube or Google to find more information. Good morning, my name is Ms. Driggles. I'm the art teacher at VH Lassen. To all my students, I miss you so, so, so much. This video is for kindergarten, first and second graders. And today's lesson will be working on and creating a printmaking project using some items, hopefully that you can uh, find at home or ask your parents and let them know that you need to create this this week. So the artist that we're going to be inspired by to create our project this week is Vincent Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh is a very famous artist who created a vase of sunflowers. And we're gonna use him as our inspiration to create our project. Vincent Van Gogh was a painter and he used paint to create his project. We will be creating ours using a technique called printmaking. And I will show you all the things that you will need. So let's first talk about what our objective is today. Our objective is to create a printmaking. Well, what is printmaking? Printmaking is a technique where it we can use ink or markers to create basically like a stamp and to be able to use that and reprint um, pictures on paper. I am going to show you how to use it and how you'll be able to reuse yours as well. 
Okay, so the things that you will need to create our project is styrofoam. This is from the meat packaging. You can ask your parents to save it and wash it with soap and water. And then we're gonna use it to create our project with. You're gonna need markers, a pencil, like a dull pencil or a pen, scissors, and then I have a old piece of wood, like a chopstick, and some paper. Step one is to take your styrofoam and see how it has those edges. You want to cut it out so that it's flat. This piece particularly has already has texture in it. So I'm going to cut this around that piece and I'm going to probably use this side because you want to use the blank part that has no print on it and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I've already cut out a piece. This one has prints on both sides, so what I'm going to do is cut out this piece and this piece. You want it to be flat because we're going to press it down into the paper, and I'll show you what I mean. I've cut out the pieces. This middle piece I'm going to take out because I don't need that. What I'm, we're going to do is we're going to use these two pieces. Now that you have your piece of styrofoam cut out, what you're going to do is you're going to use either a pencil or a pen and you're gonna get started to create one big sunflower. So in the middle, you're gonna press down. You wanna make an indention. That means you wanna make it go all the way down to create depth. Now to create a sunflower, the easiest way is to put a point there. You can curve your flower petal like this and do another one. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna do that all the way around and I'll show you when I'm finished. So now that I'm finished with the flower, you wanna make sure that when you are drawing your flower that you press your pen down into the styrofoam to create a little bit of negative space. What's gonna happen is when we do the print, that part won't print. So I'll show you that in a few minutes. The next step we have to do is to use our markers and color it in. Okay, now we're back with the colored in stamp that we created. So you're gonna color it in just like you would as if it was on paper. Uh, I didn't have a blue marker, but so I used purple for my background. You don't wanna leave too much white space. Make sure you color it in. You don't need to color down in the grooves because that's what's going to create the print. So our next step is to create the print on paper. Okay, so the next step is to take your paper that you're going to put your print on and you want to kind of get it a little bit wet. You want to kind of make sure that it has a little bit of water on it. You need to damp it because what we're going to use do is take our uh, stamp or plate that we created and you're going to turn it upside down to create your printmaking project. As you see, I'm just wetting the paper. The whole thing doesn't need to just where you're going to put it, the plate. So I'm going to try to make sure I center it right in the middle. I'm going to turn it over. You don't need to bang it, but you can press down. You wanna make sure that you press down on the whole thing. Try not to get any ink or anything around the edge of your paper. Press it down for about 30 to 60 seconds. You can Kind of tap it with your finger. You just want to make sure that everything is getting absorbed into the paper. So let's lift it up carefully, lift it up, and there you have your print. You look, here is the plate, and all of the marker is now absorbed into the paper. And where you press down, uh, to leave the negative space is going to be whatever color your paper is. So that part is left white. Um, also, what you can do is rinse this off and make sure you dry it off. 
and redo it again using all types of different colors if you want. You can even go in and put some more patterns in the background. Um, just do it on a new clean paper, let this one dry, and that's it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you are inspired by our artist Vincent Van Gogh and you go and create a printmaking of your own sunflower. I hope, I would love to see what they look like. Have your parents take a picture of it and send it to your teacher. I also would love to, for you, uh, maybe you can put on the back of what you learned and how you learned to do printmaking. And I can't, and we're also helping to recycle. So save your printmaking plates and you can also use them uh, later on as well. Okay, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. See you next week. today kids is a warm-up it's very important to get your body warmed up first even before you do stretches to get the blood circulating through your body it allows your muscles to relax you do not want to stretch your whole body all right so the first thing we're going to do today is arm circles so put your arms out flat go one two three four five reverse for five one two three four five the next exercise we're going to do to warm up the shoulders are arm swings remember to keep your arms at your shoulders width ready begin one two three four five good job all right good job warming up those shoulders now let's move to our midsection the first exercise we're going to do is called trunk twist try saying that three times so what I want you to do is reach side to side five times as if you are trying to touch the other opposite wall. Ready, begin. One, two, three. Good job. Four, five. Way to go. The next exercise we're going to do is called windmill. Windmill, for, I want you to spread your legs, slightly bent, and do not rush. Take your time. You're going to bend down to touch each one of your legs. Follow me. Ready? Begin. One, two, three, four, five. Good job. Good job, kids. Now we're going to warm up our hips. The first exercise is called the Heisman. Bring your opposite knee to your opposite elbow, and we're going to do five of these. Ready? Begin. One, two, three, four, five. Good job doing that. This next exercise is going to be called Frankenstein. Bring your legs to your upper body. Don't bend down to try to touch your foot. Let's do five of these, each leg. Ready? Begin. One. Two, three, good job. Four, five, way to go. Now we're going to engage our core. We're gonna do a warm up called the T-plank. Get into a plank position and reach up and touch the sky nice and slow. 10 times. One, two, three, four, good job. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Way to go. Now let's engage our entire body doing some jumping jacks. Ten of these. Ready? Begin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good job. Let's do some jump rope. Imagine that you have an imaginary jump rope, but let's do 10 jump ropes. Ready, begin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Good job. Each 
stretch that we're going to do, I want you to hold it for at least 10 seconds. Okay, even though if I don't hold it for 10 seconds in this video, I want you to hold it for 10 seconds. And you're gonna do each stretch three times. All right, enjoy. All right, class, so the first stretch we're gonna do is gonna be called the standing side stretch. Very easy to do. So you have your legs together. Reach that arm in the sky. And bend over and try to test the sky. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Good job on that first stretch. Now the second stretch is going to be three stretches in one. Um, and it is the standing hamstring stretch. So I want you to spread your feet. First time we're going to go down and touch our left leg, right leg, and then we're going to the middle. Each um, held for 10 seconds. Let's start with the left. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, relax. We're gonna go to the other side and you're gonna feel this stretch in the back of your leg, which is called your hamstring. Ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Relax. Last one, we're gonna go down to the middle. It's gonna work both of your uh, hamstrings. Ready? Begin. One, two, three, four. Reach back. Six, reach back. Try to touch my hand. There you go. Keep the legs straight. Eight, nine, ten. All right. Good job. All right, class. Good job doing your standing hamstring stretches. Now we're going to stretch the part of your quadriceps. Your quadriceps. All right. So this one can be a little bit tricky, but there is a way that you can do it to lose your balance. So what we're going to do is you're going to hold your leg in the air. Hold the back of your foot for ten seconds. Ready? If you fall out, all you gotta do is pull down on your opposite ear. A little bit. Ready? Begin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Relax. Good job. Let's do the other leg. Ready? Begin. Good job doing your hamstrings, your quadriceps. I guess Kazi wants to stretch too. And now we are going to just loosen up the um, upper part of our body, our arms. Okay, and then we'll finish with that. So, first stretch, I want you to take your left arm, raise it up, other arm, and take it across your body. And yep, and pull it. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Relax. Other arm up. Take it across. And hold it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Relax. And now just let them hang and just wiggle for ten seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax. All right. I hope you enjoyed your stretch. I want you to do each one of those stretches three times. It should not take you very long and you should feel great. Have a good day. Good job, son. Guys, right, so the first exercise we are going to learn today is the standard push-up. Um, the standard push-ups work your chest, your shoulders, um, and your triceps. All right, now let me show you what I don't want you to do. So when you get down, I don't want your back to be bent in or arched. I want you to have a nice straight back and you look out to the spot that's out in front of you. Don't tuck your chin and you go down. I want you to do as many as you can do. Three, four, even one is fine. Where should their hands be, coach? Your hands should be right underneath your shoulders. Okay? So you're going to 
don't want them in or you don't want them out right now. Standard push up right under your shoulders or a little bit wider. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm going to show you two modifications to the standard push up. The first one is going to be on your knees and you're going to rock down instead of being in a plank position. All right, baby, show us how to do it. So you get on your knees, arms up, and you just do three. Just do three. One, two, three. Perfect. Good job. All right, so the second modification is I need you to get a partner. It could be an adult. It could be an older sibling. Someone who can hold a blanket, a sheet, uh, or a towel, even, okay? So what you'll do is you'll get in a plank position, put your towel or blanket underneath, and then you help them get up. So go down, let's do five. One, two, and I'm just gently helping him up. Three, four, five, good job. Okay, so we worked on our chest, so now we're gonna do an exercise that's gonna work on our legs to build our leg muscles. And we're gonna do the standard squat. All right, guys, so stand in, on your mat in the middle a little bit. All right, so you wanna make sure your feet are right underneath your shoulders. Okay, right down. Good job. Now your toes should be pointing straight ahead. Trust, look down. Your, and your heels should be pointing straight ahead. So get your heels right underneath you. There you go. Perfect. All right. And so I do not, when you bend down, do not have your knees come in, okay? Straight up, just like that. Okay? You ready? Put your hands up. Let's do five. Set, go. Down slow. One, up. Two. Two. Three. Four. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the last exercise of today, we are going to work on our core. There are thousands of ways to work on your core. Today, we're gonna to start with the beginning and we're going to do the standard sit-up. You can put your uh, arms behind your head if you would like, show them how to do that. Or you can just use your arms, okay? That's nice, okay. So first, straighten your legs. Straighten. All right, so to start, bend your knees, feet, flat on the floor, and are you gonna use your arms? Okay, and you're gonna use your arms if you just sit all the way up. Set, go. One, you do three, two, three, excellent, that's very good. All right, so we did the standard setup, and so let me show you how to modify the setup. Um, some people's abs are stronger than others, and that's okay. You work. Um, with the modification, then you build yourself up. So grab your adult or your sibling, any partner that you want, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna have your knees bent, keep your feet on the ground, okay, bent, and keep your butt on the ground, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab the blanket, pillowcase, or towel, and you just, I'm gonna help you pull up, okay? Let's do five. Set, go. One, you just gently pull up. Two, helping them as much as you need to. Three, Good job. Four. Last one. Five. That's five. Good job. Buddy. One. All right, everybody. That was a good workout today. Just to rewind a little bit, we worked on our chest. We did the standard push up. Um, we did the squat to work on our legs. And we also did um, a standard sit up. There's a saying that says a body in motion stays in motion. So what that means is if you get up in the morning and you get your body moving, if you're feeling a little lazy, a little sad, or you just want some more energy, all you gotta do is do these exercises that coach is showing you, and I promise you, you will feel a lot better. Um, your core consists of your, of your upper abs, your lower abs, your obliques, and your lower back. So each exercise, do as many as you can with proper form. Even if that's one or two, it's very important that you do the proper form so that you prevent injury. So the first exercise we're gonna do is called crunchy frogs. You wanna make sure that you engage your stomach, kinda of suck your belly button to your back. You can put your hands down here for support. Next exercise.
exercise. It's called Heels to Heaven. You want to make sure that you rest your neck and your head on the floor, eyes looking straight up at the ceiling or the sun. All right, so we've targeted our upper abs with the crunchy frogs. We targeted our lower abs with the hills to heavens. And now we are going to target our obliques with oblique twist. And what you have to do is you wanna lean back about 45 degrees and you wanna to touch the floor on either side of you, like this. So some key points with the oblique twist is that you wanna make sure that you're not leaning back too far, that puts strain on your back, and you're not sitting up too close to your knees because that is not um, targeting your abs. So find that nice comfortable spot where you can feel your abs tighten up and that's the position you wanna be in. For the last exercise, we'll target our lower back we're gonna do an exercise called Superman. They're called Superman because it looks like you're kind of flying in the air. And what you wanna do is you just wanna make sure that you have your hands out in front of you and you lift your feet and your arms at the same time, kind of like you're flying through the air. Hold it, relax. Hold it, relax. Hold it, relax. So I hope you enjoyed that workout. Make sure you always stay safe. Think of the safety tips before you go and do these exercises. And as always, have a great day, the Eagle way. So the first position we're gonna start with is a plank position. To get in the plank position, it's kind of like a push up but you just don't go down. You wanna make sure that your black back is flat. If you cannot have your arms straight and locked out, you can always bend your arms to get into a plank position, straight back. The next pose is called an upward dog. And so from laying on your chest, you go right into the upward dog. The next position is called the upward dog. So you want to put the balls of your feet on the ground, tighten up your trunk, and put your bottom to the sun. All right, class, now I'm going to show you how to take those three poses and put them into a yoga flow. And I normally do this three times, each exercise, and it's called a sun salutation.
Hi, I'm Emily Flathers. I teach K through three music in the Osborne School District of Central Phoenix. So glad you're here with me today. I'm super excited about this lesson. I love to explore sound as you probably have heard. This one has to do with how the size of something is going to affect the sound it makes. I'd like to warm up first. We'll start with some beat work, keeping the beat, and then we're gonna go right into playing with our voices. You ready to follow me? All right, let's go. Ba, 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 ba. La, 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 la. Choo, 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 choo. Meow, 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 meow. Foot, 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 foot. Blah, 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 blah. Pa, 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 pa. Pa, 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 pa. Lu, 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 lu. Woo! Nice job. Thanks for stretching your voice and getting a great beat going with me. I always like to start the lesson also with a chant. We're going to use our high and low voices today, and you might have heard this chant before. It's a nursery rhyme called One, Two, Buckle My Shoe. If you don't know it, it's pretty cool because there's a part you can join in if you know how to count to 10. I'll do it all by myself. You go ahead and listen. Give me a thumbs up if you're going to listen. All right, here I go, all by myself. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, shut the door. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, lay them straight. Nine, ten, a big fat hen. Awesome. This time, would you join me just on the numbers? We're going to be counting two numbers at a time. I'll do the rest. Got it? What part are you going to do? Yes, the numbers. Ready, set, here we go. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, shut the door. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, lay them straight. Nine, ten, a big fat hen. Ah, some of you say you know this already. Let's try it together. Ready and go. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, shut the door. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, lay them straight. Nine, ten, a big fat hen. Nicely done. You did it. Now we're going to play. 
I wonder if we could make our numbers really high up in our voice like this and make the other part down low in our voice like this. Should we try it? For me, it helps if I have my little puppet hand with me. One, two, ha! <laughs> and my other puppet hand with me down low, down like that. Ready, set, high, then low. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, shut the door. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, lay them straight. Nine, ten, a big fat head. Ma, 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 ma. Great. Let's do it one more time, taking our voice from low to high as we go, following my hand, and then we'll calm down again. Sounds like Dory, do you speak whale again? I love playing with high and low in my voice. And the more you do this, the more effective speaker you're going to be, the more expressive and a better communicator people will get what you're saying. Here we go, let's start in our low voice. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, shut the door. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, lay them straight. Nine, ten, a big fat hen. And we ended up right in the middle. Good job. High and low is uh, part of our story we're going to tell today, and you may have heard this story before. It's called The Three Billy Goats Gruff. It comes from Norway, which is a very cold, chilly land. If you've seen things like um, Trolls and Frozen, that's the area of the world we're talking about. So we have several characters in our story. We have three Billy Goat brothers, a baby, youngest one, and the middle one, and the oldest one, and we have a troll that they're going to meet later. So let's see if you can hear how I use my high, medium, and low voice in this story. Once upon a time, a long time ago, in the cold land of Norway, lived three billy goat brothers. The littlest one was a sweet little goat with a high little voice and tiny little hooves, and he loved to smell the flowers before he ate them. The middle brother was kind of a cool goat. He liked to wear his sunglasses, and he had a bell around him that he used to make some beats with. And the biggest billy goat brother, the oldest, was very large. He had very powerful hooves and big horns and very fierce looking face at times. Anyway, the three of them lived at the top of a beautiful meadow. There's a hill and a river down the way, but they never needed to go down there because they had all the grass they needed. The littlest billy goat would chomp on the grass. I love this green grass. I'm so happy. Ha! The medium brother, the middle brother, would chew on the grass. I'm enjoying this grass. This is some fine, fine grass. Who planted this grass? I should, I should write them a letter. And the biggest ghost. <laughs> oh, I'm loving this grass. <laughs> Can't talk now. Eating. But the thing was, as often happens, the grass began to run out. They had eaten it all up, the grass where they were at. And in goat behavior, it's time to move on to new pastures. So they looked down the hill at the river that ran there, bubbling and full, and they saw a wooden bridge that would allow them to go to the other side and enjoy the grass on the green hill on the other side. So they decided it was time to cross the river. The little billy goat went first. La 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 la, what a beautiful day, going down to the river, and he began to cross the bridge, and his feet made a teeny tiny sound, trip trap, trip trap, as he crossed the wooden bridge. Well, no sooner had he set foot on the bridge when roar, a giant troll jumped up from under the bridge and said, what are you doing making little trip trap noises on my bridge? And the littlest goat said, well, sir, I was just going to cross to eat the grass on the other side. Let me through, please. And the troll, of course, said, ha, I've got great yellow horns and great yellow teeth, and I think you'd make a good snack for me. And the goat said, no, I think I'm too small for you. Why don't you wait just a little while? My older brother will be coming, and he's much bigger than me. Well, the troll thought about having a bigger snack. He said, be off with you then, you little runt. I'm waiting for your brother. So the little goat, trip trap, trip trap, trip trap, all the way across the bridge and began to eat grass in the beautiful green meadow on the other side. Sometime later, 
the middle goat started to cross the bridge. Trip trap, trip trap, and no sooner had he set foot on the bridge when rawr, there's the troll ready for snacking. Halt, who's going trip trap over my bridge? And the middle goat said, it's me. I'm just going across the bridge, gonna do some uh, eating over there. Excuse me, please, I'd like to get through. And of course the troll said, no, not on my watch. You're gonna be my snack. Your little brother told me you were coming. And he said, uh, you know, we have one more brother and he's huge. You could probably snack off him all day. And the troll said, well, all right, then I'll wait for him. Get on out of here. And the middle goat did. Trip trap, trip trap across the bridge and began to eat grass with his littlest brother. Well, I bet you can guess what's gonna happen next. The biggest goat decided it was time to go. And he stepped on that bridge and his heavy weight in his mighty feet make that bridge shake as if it would fall into the river. Trip trap, trip trap. The troll had no herders, uh, heard him and boom, he's up on the bridge. Aha, your little brothers told me you're coming. I'm ready to have a snack that's gonna last me all day. I've got great yellow horns and great yellow teeth and I'm looking forward to meeting with you. And the goat said, well, I've got horns of my own and my teeth are white because I brush them and my hooves will match your horns any day. The troll said, bring it on. They walked towards one another. Then the big goat turned around and bam, woo, kerplop. There goes the troll into the river, never to be seen again. The biggest goat with his hooves and he's across the river, trip trap, trip trap to join his brother. As far as I know, they're still there, eating, fat and happy, enjoying that green, green grass. And that, my friends, is the story of the three Billy Goat Gruff. So, the Billy Goats all had their voices, from the little one with his tiny little voice, to the medium one with a medium voice, and to the large one with a deep voice. Those same characteristics of high, medium, and low apply to instruments. The smaller something is, the higher its pitch is going to be. Pitch is a word that we use to mean high sound or low sound or anything in between. I brought some instruments today and I'd love to share some with you. And before I play them, if you can make some predictions about what their voices are going to do. These you've probably seen before. These are little hand clappers. You might have got these as prizes from something. I'm going to go ahead and play one. High, medium, low. What do you think is going to happen with this huge one? Whoa, very deep sound. Size means that things are going to vibrate either very quickly if they're small, because there's just a little stuff to move, or slower if they're larger. So the slowness of that helps create the pitch. All right, well, those are the hand clappers. Let's move over to the middle of the table. I've got some frogs from Thailand. These are little razorback, uh, razorback frogs. They like to have their hair combed. So let's start with the guy in the middle. Hello, little frog. Let's comb your hair, you little mohawk. Hmm. Wow. They also, you can just tap them on the nose to make a sound. And you heard the sound, the pitch going from low, medium, high. Wow, so they agree with that idea that small things make high sounds. Let's move over to a glockenspiel. Some of you have heard of a xylophone. It's the same thing as a xylophone, but it's made of metal. I'm going to move from the large bars to the small bars. Which way did the pitch move, up or down? Yes, it sounded like something going up. 
you can play many different songs, but you can see how the pitch going down helps the song feel finished. I wonder if you know this song. Yes, it was Row, Row, Row Your Boat. You heard at the end, I'm going to turn this. Life is but a dream. The pitch went down and came to rest. What a cool thing. People have spent years, thousands of years, figuring out how instruments can be made and how size can help them make the sounds they want to make. I've got one more instrument today, and this one comes from Peru. It is called a siku. It is sort of a bamboo-like flute with many little tubes of different sizes. If I toot on the small tube, and if I move towards the large tube, so people who are experts at playing know how to create sounds. They have all the different notes, the different pitches they want here. Wow, we've seen instruments from all around the world and they all have the same rule that works because that's just a rule of science, of sound, that small things vibrate quickly making a high pitch and large things vibrate more slowly making a low pitch. I wonder how you could play with pitch at home. Let's think. So what can you do at home to play with sound? Well, there's lots of stuff you have around your house. I remember I got interested in sound because we had blocks. We had wooden blocks, a little blocks and bigger ones and huge ones. And I loved to hear the sound they made as I dropped them on the carpet. Nowadays, when I teach about xylophones and their wooden bars, I still drop them on the carpet to listen to them. So you have all sorts of stuff that's not breakable that you can drop on the carpet and listen to. Let me show you some of my favorite things to try. I like to bake. I didn't buy these for baking though. I bought them for making music. They're a bunch of measuring cups of different sizes. And when I tap them, they're gonna make a different sound. Let's try each one. Take just a few and let's see if we can fan them out to make so you can hear that sound of big to little. All right. You probably have measuring stuff at your house, maybe teaspoons, tablespoons, itty bitty spoons, all sorts of things in the kitchen. The kitchen is a great resource to find stuff to play with. But maybe, maybe you've got stuff in your own room. I brought one of my bears. This is Oso Amoroso, loving bear, and a little bird that likes to hang. I have two different size friends. I could have one talk to the other. Good morning, little bird. Buenos dias, how are you? Oh, so nice to see you, Mr. Bear. I'm doing fine. You can have a conversation and make your voice either low for the big one or high for the little one. Maybe you have dolls at home. I had to read my granddaughter's, hello, Michaela, your stuff's on TV. Um, Wonder Woman talking to Mavis. Good morning, Mavis, how are you? I'm doing fine, Wonder Woman. What's new with you? Well, I just had to save Gotham City from all sorts of things going on. That's cool. I flew around the world, ha <laughs> ha. Fun. Maybe you've got toy trucks. What would they say to each other? If you've seen all those toy trucks, things, Thomas the Train, all sorts of things they might have a conversation about. Hey, little squirt, how you doing today? Pretty good. They say I get to go and pull my own, very own train today for the first time. Well, that's cool. Good luck with that. Maybe have two toys that look alike. Maybe this is parent and child. Mom, I'm hungry, I want some lunch. Okay, dear, let's go to the garden. Besides toys, there's again in your kitchen all sorts of stuff. I used to make stuff like this all the time. On your cereal boxes, there's often gonna be little friends here. You can cut them out. The bee, I love doing the bee, he gets to buzz around. Or maybe there's even really big ones. You cut them out. Get a little glue or tape, put them on a popsicle, popsicle stick, and then you've got puppets. Make your own show. What would they talk about? You can have the spoons talk with the forks. You can have the cups talk with the plates. Pencils talking with erasers. Anything that you have around, give it a voice and experiment with making your voice go high if it's small or lower if it's big. 
or medium. I have been Emily Flathers. I still am Emily Flathers. So glad to be with you today experimenting with sound and how size matters. You've been watching Phoenix TV's Study Hall, brought to you by District 8 and our partners at Osborne and Roosevelt School Districts. Tune in Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for more Study Hall. I hope you learned something today and keep up the great work.